At number nine, Carmen. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, engagement is everything. For a lot of performers, they try to get out in front as many people as possible and attract more fans because doing so will help you grow faster, making you famous. One of the biggest assets you could have when growing your audience is having a successful guest appearance on a late night show like SNL because of how many viewers can tune in and watch you grow. This is how Lana Del Rey started, but this blessing can also be a curse and can end a few careers as well. Carmen was a music duo who got their start on YouTube by posting covers, though now it's been disbanded and rebranded, and there was a time when they almost reached fame after being musical guests on SNL, but after tanking their performance, they lost it all. They had a large following, and so when the casting director over on SNL found them and invited them to perform on the show, things started to look promising. They came on the show and performed their songs Broken Hearted and I Told You So, and after their performance, the reviews came pouring in, and they weren't very positive. They faced a lot of criticism saying that they failed to connect with the audience, and one review even claimed that the duo's performance caused, quote, mild auditory distress. After this catastrophic performance, things weren't ever the same, and their careers were pretty much over after that night. Now before I carry on with the list, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video to help support the channel. At number 8, Paula Deen. Paula Deen was once the wholesome southern mom who loved to cook, but after 2013, she took on a very different label after a lawsuit revealed her racist actions to the world. In 2013, Paula was facing legal action from one of her former employees, who alleged that Paula was racist towards her and that she had repeatedly been harassed while working at one of her restaurants. After being deposed, the truth came out about Paula when asked if she had ever used the N-word, and she said yes. After this came out, the floodgates opened and backlash ensued. As anyone would do, Paula went on the defense and even sat down for an interview on the Today Show, but instead of owning up to her actions and trying to clear her name, as most people would try to do in that situation, Paula instead deflected the criticism she was facing and even voiced how she was surprised that so many people were taking offense towards her actions. It was thought that this interview was all for publicity, not for making a public apology, and after this, her career was pretty much done for because there was no coming back from this scandal, especially because she never apologized. In at number seven, Howie Mandel. Now you'd think because these two were co-hosts on the show America's Got Talent that they would have bonded a little bit, but nope. In fact, they probably would have liked each other more if they had never even met. During an interview with Billy Bush and Kit Hoover on Access Hollywood, Pierce said, I actually want to torture and dismember Howie. He is without a doubt the most annoying man in the history of planet Earth. Those are some harsh words, and after Howie pranked Pierce one too many times, he outright banned Mandel from ever appearing as a guest on his independent launch. Live shows. At number six, Jenny Slate. Sometimes your career can make or break you. Doing your job really well can pay off later down the line, but if you mess up, there can be some consequences. The messing up part applies to comedian Jenny Slate because after an incident on SNL cost her her job, her career may have been set back a little. Though she's found a lot of success now, back in 2009 when she worked on SNL, she was pretty new to the industry and was looking for something to bring her career to new heights. When she was hired on SNL as a writer and performer, things were looking great for her, but all that excitement turned sour after her first on-air performance. In her first appearance as a member of cast on the show, she was performing one of the sketches that she wrote, and while on air, she accidentally switched up one of her lines, making it a little more adult and dropping an F-bomb. She quickly caught herself saying it, but it was too late. Unfortunately, you can't put the words back in once they've left your mouth. She tried to brush it off, pretending like no one else heard it, but unfortunately, people did hear it. This mistake stuck with her for the rest of the time that she worked there, and she ended up leaving the show after one season. She was fired at the end of the season, not necessarily because of the F-bomb incident, but because she quote, didn't do a good job and didn't click. Because she got fired from such a big time production, it took a little for her to get back on her feet, but she's been doing great since. A minor setback, but nothing major. Happy doing number five, Bill Murray. Bill Murray is known for being one of the most iconic comedians of all time, but you might not have known that he also holds the spot for one of the most legendary drunk interviews of all time too. In 2015, he appeared on David Letterman's TV show where he is seen taking multiple shots of vodka on air. But that's not the story though. Where things get crazy is when Murray then goes on to MSNBC during a live broadcast and interrupts Lawrence O'Donnell's segment while it's live on air. Then when he finally sits down to wait to go on the show, he completely falls off one of those high chair stool sort of things onto the ground. Then during the interview, he slurs like crazy while trying to answer some questions and Pretty much, there's absolutely no doubt that he was wasted. At number four, Janet Jackson. The Super Bowl halftime show is the one moment a year that millions of people tune in to watch the same thing. 
People turn off their reality TV programs and reruns of Jeopardy to grab a snack and watch the year's biggest performance. Well, during the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, viewers watched a serious wardrobe malfunction happen that was life changing to say the least. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake were performing together when a move went wrong and Janet's breast ended up getting exposed. Following the incident, the media dubbed Nipplegate, the FCC sued CBS for the live incident in a $550,000 lawsuit citing indecent exposure for their cause. Janet Jackson was really put through the ringer for her part in the whole scandal. As a result, she was uninvited to the Grammy Awards that year and her songs were blacklisted from the radio. Even the next few albums that she released following the incident was met with negative reviews because of the scandal. If this were to happen now, I doubt she would have been met with such severe backlash. Do you? It was later discovered that this whole incident happened because the two performers had added a costume reveal into their performance at the last minute, and though it was rehearsed, the stunt failed at the last minute, resulting in Janice's exposure. It was all just an accident that ended up destroying someone's career. In at number three, Steven Seagal. Back in 1991, Steven Seagal wasn't chomping on carrots and using too much Just for Men in his beard. He was a big action star. So needless to say, most people were excited to see him hosting Saturday Night Live. Unfortunately, the cast found him extremely difficult to work with. Norm Macdonald even said that he told them he didn't want to be in any of the sketches, which is typically something that every host just does. He did eventually oblige their request, but the cast was so fed up with him that they almost did the show with no host at all. Seagal was then banned by Lord Michaels immediately after for being, as he so eloquently put it, the worst host ever. In fact, in 2014, Michaels told New York Magazine that when Nicolas Cage was hosting, he worried that he wasn't doing well and said during his monologue that he hopes he wasn't the worst toast ever. Without missing a beat, Lauren walked on stage to reassure him that no, that was Steve Seagal. At number two, Millie Vanilli. In the 90s, there was a huge music scandal that ended careers and ended in tragedy. The lip sync scandal that surrounded Millie Vanilli was one of music's biggest scandals and it revealed that they were never really a real group and that everything was fake. This stage act was put together by German record producer Frank Farian as he attempted to create the next biggest music stars. It worked in theory, but they fell from grace as quickly as they rose. He had a vision to be able to release amazing music, but he needed the perfect people to sell it, and that's where Morvan and Politis came into play. These two dancers were hired to be the bright, shining faces of Millie Vanilli, and though it was a musical act, they never had to sing. In fact, they lip synced their entire career. Their act was a hit and it worked for a while, even earning themselves a Grammy for their song Girl You Know It's True, but like all good things, they can never last. Millie Vanilli conquered the Billboard charts, they were asked to tour and perform live, but things started to get difficult for them since this act never really sang and playing pretend on stage just wasn't cutting it. Eventually, they were caught in the act, so to speak, as their track suddenly stopped working during the live performance, revealing that they were faking it all along. This took a big toll on Morvan and Politis, especially on their mental health, driving Politis to take his own life. And finally, number one, Natalia Kills. How mean is too mean? Well, for former X Factor New Zealand judge Natalia Kills, she was too mean. After casting some harsh judgment on an X Factor contestant, Natalia was dubbed a bully and saw her career go down the tubes as a result. On the show's second season, contestant Joe Irvin performed a rendition of Michael Bublé's Crime Your River, and when he finished his performance, that is when all hell broke loose. Natalia criticized his performance harshly, saying that he was a copycat of her husband, saying that he made her feel disgusted and sick. She also said, quote, as an artist who respects creative integrity and intellectual property, I'm disgusted at how much you have copied from my husband. From the hair to the suit, do you not have any value or respect for originality? You are a laughing stock, it's cheesy, it's disgusting. I personally found it absolutely artistically atrocious, end quote. A lot of people were shocked at how harsh her criticisms were, and so many people were appalled by Natalia's behavior that a petition was made to have her and another judge who was also a little too harsh removed from the show. The petition worked, and they were both booted midway through the season. Following this incident, Natalia was shunned and even went as far as changing her name to deflect some of the scrutiny that she was facing. Her career was truly over after this moment. Starting off at number 10, we have Kanye West. So starting at number 10, we have one that you should all know if you love sipping some good old tea, and that is Kanye West's Grammy incident. In one of the most famous and unexpected outbursts of all time, Kanye West interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech at the MTV VMAs in 2009. I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. 
while Taylor Swift was on stage accepting her award for best female music video. Kanye famously yelled, quote, Taylor, I'm really happy for you, I'ma let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. <laughs> Which was a complete shock to everyone, and was embarrassing as hell for pretty much everyone involved, including Beyonce, who I'm sure was not happy that Kanye did that. Thankfully, he could blame the tirade on being wasted, or the world might never have forgiven him. A lot of people still haven't, but rightfully so. In at number 9, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore embarrassed herself on The Alan Carr Show when she fumbled her words and ended up saying something uh, a bit naughty. While her and Tony Collette were on the show promoting their new film, Miss You Already, a slightly sauced Drew Barrymore told a seemingly raunchy story about herself and Michael Stipe, with her saying in the interview that Tony emailed him saying, would you? And he replied, yes I would, absolutely. And with everyone being a little confused, Alan clarified, for the music, right? And then a very flustered Drew put her hand on her face and said, this is why you don't drink on talk shows. Then she tried to change the subject by joking around, saying, you know, any food, it worked. And when she said that, Alan Carr looked uh, more than a little uncomfortable. And he told her that in the UK, foof means, you know, lady parts. And there was a hot debate over whether that word actually meant what he thought, with Tony adding that fanny is usually meant when talking about that region, not foof. Let me know below, I've, I've never heard foof, I didn't know what that means, sorry if I'm offending you by saying that, foof, I'll say it again. And at number eight, Ben Affleck. Now this one gets a little creepy. During a Ben Affleck interview in 2004 with a French Canadian reporter where he was promoting his new movie, Jersey Girl, which is also just an amazing movie, side note. During the interview, Affleck was just straight up acting really gross, commenting on the cleavage of the interviewer and asking why she covered up for him in this interview when, quote, her t's are usually out. There was also this really strange moment where they were like cuddling on a couch and he keeps saying just really creepy stuff. Like I had serious secondhand embarrassment for the both of them. Many blamed his shameful behavior on him most likely being drunk. However, in 2017, the video resurfaced and the interviewer came out saying that the whole thing was actually staged and that people shouldn't feel bad for her as everything that happened was fully consented by her. And since this is a really strange thing to admit to years later, that makes no sense at all. Kind of called BS here. But even if it was staged, he was probably still, you know, at least a little drunk. At number seven, Charles Rocket. The 1980-1981 season of Saturday Night Live was a rocky and controversial one. This all started after executive producer Lorne Michaels took a step back from the show for a year and the position was filled by Gene Dumanian. Because of this position change, most of the cast left, prompting Gene to have to hire a new cast. This new cast was full of new faces and was untested, so at this point, the show was facing a lot of criticisms and bad reviews. Things went from bad to worse for everyone after comedian Charles Rocket dropped an F-bomb during a skit. SNL skits have been quite controversial in the past and they still face backlash from time to time, but swearing on live TV was really where the show drew the line and breaking that cardinal rule could be detrimental to your career. During the season's 11th episode, Charles was closing out the show and decided to let an F-bomb fly while referencing a skit that he did earlier where he said, quote, this is the first time I've been shot in my life. I'd like to know who the F did it, end quote. People seem to believe that he swore on purpose because if you watch the footage back, there isn't any hesitation when he said it. But it could have just been that he didn't know that he couldn't say it or he didn't realize that he had said it until later. Either way, this was the last straw for the studio and they fired much of the cast and crew, including Gene and Charles. This whole scandal came so close to sinking the entire show for good, but it did end up destroying Rocket's career after this. And at number six, John Stamos. John Stamos is someone that I think a lot of people could see themselves, you know, cutting loose and having a drink with. And if you want a sneak peek into how he might act on a night out, look no further than an interview that he did on an Australian morning show. In the start of this clip, it's pretty obvious that he's been drinking, and after the interviewer makes a comment about it, he admits that there's straight up vodka in his glass. Then John Stamos goes off on a reporter that calls him out for being tired after his long flight. And when the host claims that he can't take criticism well, John says it was all just a low blow. Then when they start talking over each other for a bit, John looks off camera and yells, she won't let the guests talk. <laughs> Which was a bit rude, but you know, very true in the moment. Then at the end, he gets the name of the paper and tells his fellow Greeks to not buy the paper. So it's safe to say he made, you know, quite an impression down under. In at number five, Gilbert Gottfried. 
With the way Godfrey performs, you would think this rude dude would be a repeat guest on The Howard Stern Show. And the funny thing is, no one actually knows why Gilbert was banned from the show in the first place. Some believe that it was from an interaction with Stern's wife, while others think that Howard got sick of having him on. Although Gilbert didn't really seem to care, as you can see from his Instagram post. He also then would team up with fellow band guest Artie Lang to make this video trolling Howard Stern. Artie and me on with Howard to my oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? You can cut. And at number four, Steve-O. Jackass prankster and wild child Steve-O definitely lived up to his jackass reputation on Comedy Central's Too Late with Adam Carolla. And it's a pretty common thing, especially with comedians, that they'll drink before an interview and usually before a comedy set too. So Steve-O ended up getting so wasted backstage that during the interview, he started yelling a bunch of swear words while also spitting and later in the segment attempting to rugby tackle the show's host, Adam Carolla, to the floor. Steve-O at one point also fell over, shattering a glass coffee table with his foot and slicing his leg open in the process. Ouch, that must have hurt. When Corolla tried to laugh off the craziness and like rescue the show, it was proved that Steve-O could not be tamed and at the end had to be escorted out by security. After the insane interview, Steve-O said that he woke up and had no recollection of ever being on the show, but that he was insanely proud of himself for how funny it ended up being. And thankfully that kind of thing is like very on brand for him because if a more chill celeb were to have done that, I'm sure their career would have taken a major hit. At number three, Sinead O'Connor. SNL has been hit with controversies in the past, but I think one of the biggest ones I can think of is the one surrounding Sinead O'Connor, the Catholic Church, and SNL. On October 3rd, 1992, Sinead was invited on the show and was asked to perform a few songs from her newest album at the time, and she agreed, but had one request. Instead of performing one of her original songs, she opted to sing a cover of Bob Marley's song, War. Though it was a bit of a bizarre request, they allowed it, and so Sinead got up on stage and performed a very dramatic rendition of the song, even switching up some of the lyrics to change the context and meaning. Her performance all led up to where Sinead really made a huge statement, where she tore up a photo of the Pope, saying, quote, fight the real enemy. Apparently, this whole performance was designed to be a stunt as a means to raise awareness about how the Catholic Church had allegedly been hurting people. Sinead recalled having known people who were hurt by members of the church and she wanted to fight back on their behalf. Well, instead of this helping people like she wanted it to, it instead killed her career. As for the days following this live stunt, the network received thousands of angry calls. Even some celebrities spoke out condemning Sinead for this. Her career never really recovered from this moment, but she still stands by her decision to pull the stunt anyway. And at number two, TJ Miller. While TJ Miller, the funny man in Silicon Valley, was on Colbert for an interview, there was no doubt he was absolutely sloshed. It starts off very uneasy with Miller talking about how Colbert is his wife's favorite comedian, which is obviously a little awkward because, you know, Miller himself is obviously a comedian. And during the interview, he is just so annoying that Colbert genuinely looks like a little ticked off. At one point, Miller is trying to make a joke about the Critics' Choice Awards, and while everyone is incredibly confused, he smashes an egg on his face. And he finishes the segment by touching Colbert with his creepy, like, skeleton hands. But clearly Colbert pokes some fun at Miller. And the YouTube video of the segment is called, quote, so things got weird with TJ Miller. And this is why I cannot help but love Colbert. Like even with that, I'm sure very annoying situation, you know, he still made a joke out of it. <laughs> Also, I wonder whoever had to like clean up that egg, they probably are not a fan of TJ Miller now, let's just say that. And at number one, Fergie. I'm giving Fergie the number one spot here, not because hers is like the most popular or well known, but honestly, I just think it's the funniest and the most ridiculous. During the Trevor Live Gala, Army Hammer was presenting an award. When Fergie randomly appeared on stage, Hammer ended up giving her the mic, probably because he wasn't sure like what was going on and thought it was her time to speak for some reason. Anyway, she ended up calling herself Army Hammer and then slurring her words while trying to talk, but after she sat back down, she wasn't done yet. When another performer walked off stage because of technical issues, Fergie jumped out of her seat and got on stage unscripted and started talking to the crowd again. And there was no doubt here that Fergie was definitely not sober. In at number 10, Martin Lawrence. On February 19th, 1994, comedian Martin Lawrence was hosting Saturday Night Live. However, unbeknownst to the writers, he had adjusted his opening monologue a bit. As Lawrence went on about feminine hygiene in some very descriptive ways, Lauren Michaels was absolutely fuming. Following that live audible made by Martin, the monologue was then removed from all repeats and replaced with a voiceover instead. He was banned from ever hosting again, and Lauren would make sure that Martin would never even appear on the show, nor have his name mentioned by the cast. So essentially, Martin Lawrence is the Voldemort of Saturday Night Live. 
In at number nine, the Kardashians. Minutes after Khloe Kardashian tweeted this out, I love Anderson Cooper, hashtag Silver Fox. Cooper said that if he could ban any guest, it would be the entire Kardashian family. While on Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live, Cohen and Cooper played a game called Plead the Fifth. The question posed to Anderson was, name one person you would ban from your show forever, and as I mentioned, the Kardashians were thrown quickly under the bus. Although Cooper said that it was all in good fun, we still have yet to actually see any of them appear on his show. Not that they have any political opinions they need to be spewing. In at number eight, Hugh Grant. While some accents may sound charming, Hugh Grant's personality canceled out any of that for Jon Stewart at The Daily Show. After appearing on the show, Jon Stewart said he was banning Grant for being a big pain in the ass. Stewart continued saying that he would never grant him back on the show, unintended. <laughs> During an onstage Q&A, John remarked that they've had dictators on the show, but Hugh Grant was still his least favorite guest. Apparently, Hugh spent most of the day just complaining that he had to be there and even flat out said that he had better things to be doing, for which the staff of The Daily Show didn't really care to hear, nor did Stewart. So thanks to his high maintenance attitude, he was banned from the show with zero apologies. And at number seven, Danny DeVito. This next one is lovable comedian Danny DeVito. The interview actually starts with DeVito admitting that he was hungover AF as he was out drinking with George Clooney the night before. I guess a humble brag there. He also said he had seven limoncellos right before the interview and that they were finally catching up to him. He then starts talking about President Bush and making crazy facial expressions and noises to like imitate him. Then when he literally looks like he's gonna fall asleep or pass out, Rosie O'Donnell brings him over to cuddle with her. Honestly, Danny DeVito is the best and this interview just made me love him even more, you know? In at number six, Vince Vaughn. While promoting his new movie, The Dilemma, they played a trailer on Ellen to promote the movie and in the trailer was this line. Ladies and gentlemen, electric cars, they're totally gay. Yeah, he said that on Ellen, live. You gotta imagine the network executives were sweating when that aired. For a long time, Vaughn was banned from ever appearing on the show again. However, after many years had passed and probably a few phone calls apologizing, the pair have made amends and he did come back on seven years later. At number five, Ashley Simpson. This is one of the cringiest SNL moments and is sometimes referred to as the worst moment in SNL history. Though that's a bit of an extreme title, it was a doozy of a scandal and no one was quick to forget about it, especially Ashley. In 2004, Ashley Simpson was invited on SNL as their musical guest to perform a few songs to promote her newest album at the time, Autobiography. She planned to perform a few songs from said album and things went off without a hitch as she got into her first song, Pieces of Me. Her performance went pretty well and she got the audience hyped for another song, but that's when things started to go south. As the band set up for the next song, music started playing, but it wasn't what anyone was expecting to hear. A vocal track for Pieces of Me started playing again instead of the next song in her set, revealing that Ashley had been lip syncing that whole time. She froze on stage, clearly embarrassed, and then she started doing a little embarrassing dance before running off the stage as the show cut to commercial. She tried to brush it off later when they came back on the air, but the cringe was just too much for people to handle. Later on, we found out that Ashley was advised by her father to have the vocal track and just lip sync because she'd been suffering from some severe acid reflux that had been causing damage to her vocal cords, and he just wanted her to rest her voice a little. It was only good intentions that got her into that predicament, but people say that this was the moment that destroyed her career. In at number four, Jay Leno. Believe it or not, for our next celebrity live TV band, there's a Wikipedia page for it. It's called the 2010 Tonight Show Conflict, and man, oh man, is it jam-packed with late night talk show drama. Jay Leno had been the host of The Tonight Show since 1992 and Conan had hosted Late Night since 1993. Both shows had excellent ratings, but when Conan's contract was ending, NBC promised him that they would make O'Brien the host of The Tonight Show, which was huge because it was in a much better time slot and it's obviously a dream for most talk show hosts to do that. However, they neglected to tell Leno about any of this. So when Jay's contract ended, they shifted Conan into The Tonight Show spot and Jay ended up going before primetime news. Unfortunately, both shows started to tank in the ratings, causing the networks to get nervous. After watching their views decline, they panic and ask the host to switch back. Leno was for it, Conan O'Brien, not so much. He instead took another offer and started his own show simply called Conan. And the first rule he put in order, Jay Leno was banned. 
In at number three, Mariah Carey. I hope you guys remember the absolute train wreck that was Mariah Carey's performance at the 2016 New Year's Rockin' Eve Bash. But if you didn't, we're here to give you a little reminder. Basically, she came out, missed a ton of her dance moves, and then made it incredibly obvious that she was lip syncing when the track was playing, and she was literally just standing there. And while the track is playing, she's just like talking in the mic and saying a bunch of random stuff about how they didn't rehearse the performance at all. And yeah, with the New Year's show that is like live across the globe, you obviously wanna make sure that you're pretty well rehearsed, right? Even though the event was incredibly embarrassing for Mariah, I'm hoping that she at least learned her lesson. In at number two, Joan Rivers. The late great Joan Rivers was always a recurring and outstanding guest on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. His show was without a doubt what launched her career, and the two bonded over the years with Rivers even getting the coveted spot on the couch next to Carson. However, when Joan was approached by several big television networks to start her own show, she did so without telling Johnny Carson. Many other guests had followed a similar trajectory, but each had asked for Johnny's blessing. Putting that on a shirt? They asked for Johnny Carson's approval, essentially. Johnny was devastated when Joan did this without telling him, namely because her show ran opposite him as competition. Carson then had NBC ban Joan Rivers from ever appearing on the show again, a rule that both Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien adhered to well after Johnny had passed away. Last but not least in our number one spot, Kathy Griffin. Although the photo shoot had nothing to do with the live to air show, Kathy Griffin was blacklisted hard when this photo appeared online. In 2017, the comedian became a magnet for controversy after posting a photo of herself holding a ketchup covered head that looked eerily similar to Donald Trump. I suppose the networks were frightened of this PR disaster and so Leno, Conan, Ellen, The View, Live with Regis and Kelly, The Today Show, and Letterman all banned Kathy Griffin from coming on live TV. CNN would also go on to announce that they relieved Griffin of her New Year's Eve coverage duties, a job that she had with the network for close to a decade. President Donald Trump even responded to the graphic imagery when he tweeted this out. Kathy Griffin should be ashamed of herself. My children, especially my 11 year old son, Baron, are having a hard time with this. Sick. Griffin did end up apologizing and said that even as a comedian, she knows that she crossed the line. Adding, the image is too disturbing. I understand how it offends people. It was not funny. I get it. 